time, we finished with King Saul promising that he would be different with David, promising that he would leave him in peace and recognise that David would become the next king. But Saul would not remain true to his word. He had no interest in David being the next king. And meanwhile, David is still in hiding, far away from where King Saul can reach him. Quiz time. Today's quiz is all about sharing. I'm going to show you some pictures. Can you work out how to share these things fairly? Let's start with an easy one. There are six children and there are six lollies. How can we share them out fairly? Yes, that's easy, isn't it? One each. What about this one? A block of chocolate has got 16 squares and four children would like some. How much can they have each? Four squares each. A bit trickier. If there are nine children, how many cookies could they have each? There are 18 cookies, so they could have two each. What about these party cakes? How many cakes are there? And if there were six people, how many could they have each? They would each have three cakes. What about these biscuits? Dad has opened a packet of biscuits. There are four children in the family. They're arguing. How many biscuits can they have each? Well, this is a bit more tricky, isn't it? They could have two biscuits each and then break the other two in half and have another half so they could have two and a half biscuits each. Or, more likely, Dad could eat the other two. That would be fair, wouldn't it? Another tricky one. How many cakes do we have here? What will happen if three people come for tea? Well, they could each have two, couldn't they? But what about the other one? What should happen with that one, do you think? Who should get it? Should anybody? Should it be the one who's the hungriest? Or the oldest? Or the youngest? Or the person who made them? What do you think? Grandma's made these ice lollies for her grandchildren. There are four grandchildren. They come to visit. They know that there are six ice lollies in the freezer. What would be the fairest thing to do? Well, the children could have one each, couldn't they? But what about the other two? Should they put them back in the freezer for another day? Should they give them to a friend? Should they give them to Grandma or maybe Grandad if he's there? Should somebody have more than one? What would be fair? It's not always easy to share things out fairly, is it? 
Being fair with sharing comes into our Bible passage today. Saul was continuing to fight battles and to look for David. But meanwhile, David had been with a group of other people who were on his side in a different part of the country. And we meet up with him today when he's in Ziklag. And again, things have not been going so well for David. David's army had suffered a defeat, a disaster. And many of the women and children and families had been taken away by their enemies to a different place and they'd been kept captive. Let's see what happens. The Amalekites were the Israelites' enemies. They had raided the town of Ziklag and burnt it to the ground. They didn't kill anybody, but they took all the women and children and went on their way. When David and his men arrived at the city, they found it burned down and their wives and children all taken captive. They wept loudly until they had no more strength left in them. David went to see the priest for advice. Should I pursue the raiders? Will I overtake them? The priest gave God's advice. Yes, pursue them. You'll certainly overtake them. David set out with 600 men. But when they reached a valley with a river in it, 200 of the men were too exhausted to continue and they were left behind to take care of the baggage. David and the 400 men continued the chase and they found the Amalekites eating and drinking and enjoying themselves because of all the things they had stolen from the land of the Philistines and in Judah. David and his men fought them all day from dusk until evening of the next day. Only 400 of their men escaped on camels. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken and rescued the wives and all of the children. When David arrived back with the 200 men who had been too exhausted to go with them, all the other evil and worthless men who had gone with David said, since they didn't go with us, they may take their wives and children, but we won't give them any of the plunder that we retrieved. But David said, no, the share of the one who goes into the battle will be the same as the share of the one who remains behind with the equipment. And from that day on, it became a law in Israel. And now the action moves back again to King Saul. Let's see what he's up to now. King Saul's last days. Samuel the prophet died in his old age and was buried in his hometown of Ramah. Some time later, the Philistines again made war against Israel. King Saul and his army went out to defend their country. They camped on Mount, Gil Mount Gilboa, but when Saul saw the Philistine army, he was afraid. Saul tried to find out what God wanted him to do, but the Lord gave no answer. So Saul foolishly decided to do something that God had strictly forbidden. Visit a medium, someone who claims to be able to speak to the spirits of dead people. Now King Saul had already banned mediums from the land of Israel, but his servant knew that there was a woman living in Endor who was a medium. King Saul put on a disguise so she wouldn't know who he was and went to see her. Saul said to her, speak to the spirits and call up the one I tell you. But the woman was afraid, thinking it was a trap. Surely you know that the king has forbidden everyone to do that, she said. 
Saul promised her she would be safe. Then he asked her to call back the spirit of the prophet Samuel. When Saul heard Samuel's voice, he said, I am in great trouble, Samuel. Tell me what I must do. Samuel replied, As you have disobeyed the Lord, he's giving your kingdom to David. The Philistines will defeat you, and tomorrow you and your sons will be dead. Saul was terrified. Just as Samuel said, the Philistines defeated the Israelites the next day. Many Israelites were killed and the rest ran away. The enemy captured Saul's sons, including Jonathan, and killed them. Saul was badly wounded by an arrow. Not wanting to be captured, he asked his armour bearer to kill him, but the armour bearer refused. So Saul killed himself by falling on his own sword. Just as the prophet Samuel had said, King Saul and his sons were all dead. The Big Question! David tried to do the right thing, didn't he? He tried to be fair. Do you think he's going to make a good king? How do you think David is feeling as he looks forward to being king? Is he excited? Is he scared? Will he keep on trusting God? What do you think? How would you feel if you were in David's situation? We can see that God's promises and plans for David were still coming true. King Saul and his son Jonathan had died and it wouldn't be long now before David would become king. It hasn't always been easy for David and it still won't be. But David knew that God was in control. We can learn from these events too, can't we? First of all, we thought about how some people who were just minding the baggage were not considered to be as important as those that were fighting the battle and how David had to remind them that everybody was important and everybody had a part to play. And we can remember that too. And then Christians believe that God is always in control. Sometimes we don't understand why things are happening the way they are. But we can still trust that God's purpose, purposes and God's promises are the best. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you always have perfect plans. Please help us to trust even when we don't understand. Help us to appreciate others, to know that we're all valuable and important, whatever we do, and that you want the best for each person. Amen.